Building a space station inside a meteor represents an innovative approach to extending human presence beyond Earth. This concept, while ambitious, is grounded in a series of technological, logistical, and environmental considerations that make it a compelling direction for future space exploration and habitation. The idea of constructing habitats in space is not new. However, utilizing a meteor as the foundation for such a structure offers unique advantages. Meteors, remnants of the early solar system, are abundant in resources that could potentially support life and scientific research in space. By establishing a station within a meteor, humanity can leverage these materials, reducing the need to launch all construction materials from Earth. This approach also offers natural protection against cosmic radiation and micrometeorite impacts, challenges that conventional space stations face. Instead of building from scratch, repurposing a meteor utilizes existing space resources, reducing the costs associated with heavy lift launches. Additionally, such a project would push the envelope in space engineering, robotics, and life support systems, contributing to technological advancements that could benefit other areas of space exploration and even applications on Earth. This vision, however audacious, is built upon the shoulders of decades of space exploration, advancements in aerospace engineering, and a burgeoning understanding of living in space. It's a vision that challenges us not just technically but philosophically, asking us to redefine what it means to be human in the vastness of the cosmos. But how do we embark on such an ambitious project? The answer lies not in the far reaches of future technology, but in the capabilities we possess here and now, spearheaded by the innovations of SpaceX and its Starship. Enter SpaceX's Starship, the brainchild of Elon Musk and a cornerstone of contemporary space exploration. Starship isn't just another rocket, it's the culmination of Musk's vision for making life multiplanetary, a robust, reusable launch vehicle capable of carrying up to 100 tons to orbit. But its significance extends far beyond its payload capacity. Starship represents a paradigm shift in space travel, with its potential for dramatically reducing the cost and increasing the frequency of access to space. To outfit a base within a meteor, we're not just talking about sending a handful of missions. We're envisioning a series of launches that will carry everything from the basic building blocks of the station's infrastructure to the advanced scientific equipment needed for research and the systems required for long-term human habitation. Given Starship's design for rapid reusability, it stands as the only current spacecraft capable of meeting the logistical and economic demands of such a venture. Consider the logistics of these launches. Each Starship mission, capable of delivering 100 tons to orbit, would be a complex orchestration of precision engineering and timing. For instance, constructing a space station that weighs, let's say, 10,000 tons would theoretically require 100 Starship flights. However, when we factor in the realities of space logistics, including the need for redundancy, the actual number could be higher. Moreover, Starship's potential doesn't stop at just ferrying materials to space. Its design also allows for the transportation of astronauts, scientists, and engineers who will build and inhabit the station. The versatility of Starship offers a glimpse into a future where space travel is not just for the select few, but is a part of our broader human endeavor. But why focus on Starship's payload capacity? Because it's a tangible measure of our ability to undertake projects of this scale. The engineering behind Starship, from its Raptor engines to its heat shield technology, is as much about pushing the boundaries of what's possible as it is about the meticulous attention to the physics and mathematics of space travel. Every launch, every maneuver in the vacuum of space, is governed by the immutable laws of physics, requiring precision calculations and a deep understanding of orbital mechanics. The process of securing and rerouting a meteor for the construction of a space station is a complex and multifaceted challenge involving advanced astronomical observation, precise calculations, and innovative propulsion technologies. This endeavor not only requires identifying a meteor of suitable size and composition, but also developing and deploying technology capable of altering its trajectory in space. The initial step in this ambitious project involves the identification and selection of an appropriate meteor. Astronomers utilize ground-based telescopes and space-based observation platforms to scan the cosmos for potential candidates. These celestial objects must meet specific criteria. They should be of a sufficient size, ideally a few hundred meters in diameter, to support the construction of internal structures and the generation of artificial gravity through rotation. Additionally, their composition is critical. Meteors rich in metals, such as iron and nickel, 
offer structural integrity and potential resources for in-situ utilization. Advanced spectroscopy and radar imaging techniques allow scientists to determine the composition and structural properties of distant meteors, facilitating the selection process. The ideal candidate is not only large and resource-rich, but also has an orbit that makes it accessible with current propulsion technologies. Altering the trajectory of a meteor to bring it into Earth orbit, or a stable orbit where construction can commence, involves sophisticated space engineering techniques. One proposed method is the use of gravitational tractor spacecraft. These spacecraft would not physically attach to the meteor, but instead fly alongside it using their own gravity to subtly alter the meteor's path over time. This method requires precise navigation and sustained propulsion over potentially years to achieve the desired trajectory change. Another method involves direct physical interaction, such as attaching rocket engines or ion thrusters to the meteor itself. These devices could be used to apply a direct thrust to the meteor, altering its velocity and direction. The challenge here lies in attaching the propulsion systems securely to the meteor and ensuring that the thrust is applied evenly to avoid fragmenting the object. For both methods, the delta V, or change in velocity required to reroute the meteor, is a critical factor. It depends on the meteor's mass, current trajectory, and the desired final orbit. Calculations must account for the gravitational influences of the Earth, Moon, and Sun, as well as the potential for gravitational assist from other planetary bodies. The undertaking of rerouting a meteor close to Earth raises significant environmental and safety considerations. The potential for catastrophic impact with Earth, should the mission fail or miscalculations occur, necessitates the implementation of fail-safes and redundancies at every stage of the mission. International space agencies and regulatory bodies would likely be involved in the planning and execution of such a mission, ensuring that all possible precautions are taken to minimize risk. Beyond the immediate goal of creating a space station, the mission to secure and reroute a meteor offers broader technological and scientific benefits. The technologies developed for this purpose, from advanced propulsion systems to techniques for secure attachment to a rapidly moving celestial object, have applications in asteroid mining, planetary defense against potential Earth-impacting objects, and deep space exploration. Furthermore, the mission would provide invaluable data on the structure and composition of meteors, contributing to our understanding of the solar system's formation and the potential for resource utilization in space. The project could pave the way for future endeavors in using natural celestial bodies as platforms for human activity in space, opening new possibilities for exploration, habitation, and resource acquisition beyond Earth. The excavation and construction phase of building a space station inside a meteor is a monumental engineering and logistical challenge, involving novel techniques and technologies to create a habitable space within a celestial body. This process requires overcoming unique obstacles presented by the microgravity environment, the material composition of the meteor, and the need for sustainable, long-term habitation. Excavating in the microgravity environment of space presents a set of challenges distinct from terrestrial mining. Traditional Earth-moving equipment relies on gravity to support operations, which is not feasible in space. Therefore, innovative methods must be developed for effective excavation. One promising approach is the use of laser ablation, where concentrated beams of light heat the meteor material to vaporize it, allowing for precise removal without physical contact. This method minimizes the generation of hazardous debris and can be finely controlled to shape the interior space according to specific architectural designs. Another approach could involve robotic miners equipped with drills and saws designed to operate in microgravity. These robots could be autonomous or remotely operated from Earth or in orbiting spacecraft, providing flexibility in operation. They would need to be designed to anchor themselves to the meteor's surface to apply the necessary force for drilling or cutting, possibly using harpoons or suction devices. Handling the excavated material efficiently is another critical aspect. In microgravity, removed material won't simply fall away. It must be captured and processed to prevent it from becoming a hazard to the station and equipment. The processed material could have several uses, such as shielding against cosmic radiation, raw material for additive manufacturing, 3D printing of structural components or even as soil for growing plants after undergoing chemical processing to neutralize any toxic elements.
Constructing a livable space inside a meteor requires not only the physical structuring of rooms and compartments, but also the installation of life support systems, power distribution networks, and safety measures to protect against the vacuum of space. The life support systems are the heart of the space station, ensuring that inhabitants have access to clean air, water, and comfortable living conditions. These systems must be integrated into the station's design from the outset, incorporating advanced recycling technologies to minimize waste and ensure sustainability. Water recycling systems, similar to those used on the International Space Station, would purify and reuse water from all sources, including humidity from the air and waste fluids. Air revitalization systems would remove carbon dioxide and maintain oxygen levels, possibly assisted by the use of photosynthesizing plants in a bioregenerative life support system. The excavation and construction phase of creating a space station inside a meteor is a complex, multifaceted challenge that pushes the boundaries of current space technology and engineering. Through innovation and ingenuity, this endeavor could pave the way for new methods of space habitation, utilizing the natural resources of the cosmos to support human life beyond Earth. Establishing a reliable and potent power source is crucial for the success and sustainability of a space station within a meteor. The unique environment and the extensive energy requirements for life support, scientific research, and daily operations demand a power solution that is both efficient and adaptable to the challenges of space. The first step in powering the station involves a comprehensive evaluation of its energy needs. These include basic life support systems such as air purification, water recycling, and temperature control, alongside more intensive demands from scientific equipment, excavation machinery, habitat construction and possibly propulsion systems for station maneuvering or adjustment. Additionally, considering the potential for future expansion and the need for redundancy in critical systems, the power supply must be scalable and reliable under all circumstances. Solar power alone may not meet all the energy demands of the station, especially during periods of high consumption or when the station's orbit places it in the Earth's shadow. Therefore, while solar energy could serve as a significant power source, especially for non-critical operations and redundancy, it necessitates a complementary power solution to ensure uninterrupted energy supply. Nuclear power emerges as a compelling option for providing the high levels of continuous power required by the space station. Compact nuclear reactors, specifically designed for space applications, offer a high power output relative to their size and weight, making them ideal for this environment. Modern designs for space-rated nuclear reactors focus on safety, efficiency, and minimal waste production. These reactors use low-enriched uranium or other nuclear fuels that pose a lower risk of proliferation and can be engineered to be inherently safe, with fail-safes that shut down the reactor in case of malfunction automatically. Their containment systems are designed to withstand the rigors of launch and the vacuum of space, ensuring that the reactor poses no risk to the station's inhabitants or the Earth below. One of the challenges with using nuclear power in space is heat management. Spacecraft and space stations lack the ability to dissipate heat through convection, as there is no atmosphere to carry the heat away. Advanced radiator systems must be used to radiate excess heat into space, utilizing materials and designs that maximize efficiency while minimizing weight and space usage. The conversion of nuclear heat to electrical power can be achieved through thermoelectric generators or more advanced systems like dynamic power conversion, which offers higher efficiency and greater power output. These systems convert the reactor's thermal energy into electrical energy, which can then be distributed throughout the station for various uses. Air revitalization is critical for maintaining a breathable atmosphere within the station. This involves not only the removal of carbon dioxide and other contaminants, but also the replenishment of oxygen. One method is the use of electrochemical oxygen generators, which split water into hydrogen and oxygen, providing a steady supply of breathable air. Another is the employment of regenerative life support systems that utilize plants and algae to absorb carbon dioxide and produce oxygen through photosynthesis, mimicking Earth's natural ecological cycles. These bioregenerative systems can also contribute to the crew's psychological well-being by introducing greenery and a connection to Earth-like living conditions. Incorporating artificial gravity into the design of a meteor-based space station transforms the possibilities for food production and nutrition, making the cultivation of a wider variety of food sources feasible, including traditional agriculture and livestock such as chickens. 
This enhancement not only diversifies the diet of the station's inhabitants but also contributes to psychological well-being by providing a more Earth-like living and eating experience. The implementation of artificial gravity facilitates the growth of a broader range of crops, extending beyond the leafy greens typically associated with hydroponic systems and microgravity. This environment allows for the cultivation of root vegetables, grains, and fruit trees, providing essential vitamins, minerals, and dietary fiber, and enriching the crew's diet. The natural pollination process, crucial for the fruiting of many plants, can be more effectively supported in an environment with artificial gravity potentially even allowing for the introduction of bees and other pollinators to enhance biodiversity and crop yields. As we conclude our journey through the visionary concept of constructing a space station inside a meteor, we are reminded that the future of humanity in space is a canvas awaiting our imagination and determination. This endeavor, once the province of science fiction, now stands at the frontier of what's achievable, challenging us to take the next leap. The technologies and methodologies we've explored from the precision engineering required to reroute a meteor to the innovative approaches of constructing habitats and sustaining life far from Earth, exemplify the pinnacle of human ingenuity. Each phase of this project, from securing the meteor to establishing a thriving ecosystem within its confines, showcases our capability to extend the bounds of civilization into the cosmos. This is not just a testament to our current technological prowess, but a beacon for future generations to surpass. The construction of a space station within a meteor, leveraging the might of rockets like SpaceX's Starship, employing advanced robotics for mining and construction, and pioneering new ways to generate power and sustain life, underscores a profound truth. The only limits that exist are those we place on ourselves. Looking at this grand endeavor, we are reminded that the future is indeed what we make it. Nothing discussed here is beyond the reach of our collective will and creativity. It's a call to action for all of us, scientists, engineers, dreamers, and doers to engage with the future, not as passive observers, but as active creators. The cosmos offers not just a backdrop for our aspirations, but a limitless arena for our exploration, innovation, and growth. In embracing these challenges, we not only pave the way for monumental achievements in space habitation and exploration, but also affirm our commitment to advancing human knowledge and capability. The journey ahead is filled with unknowns, but armed with our intellect, resilience, and spirit of exploration, we stand ready to meet them head on. The future of humanity in space, from living within meteors to exploring the far reaches of the galaxy, is a narrative of our making. It's a future where the impossible becomes possible, driven by our relentless pursuit of progress. Let us move forward with the confidence that the future we envision can, and will, be realized. For in the vastness of space, our potential is limitless, and the journey is just beginning.